Hey folks, it's Toby Vance from Darwin's Pitbull. We're going to be starting a new series today. This series is on problems with flood geology. Flood geology is one of the teachings of young earth creationism uh, where they try to claim that all the geological layers uh, that we see in the earth um, were deposited by Noah's flood from the book of Genesis. Uh, they try to make that claim because they don't believe that the earth is millions and billions of years old so they have to uh, do something to account for all of these layers. Um, we're going to look at the problems uh, with flood geology and why there's no scientific evidence really to back it up. So we're going to start with uh, our first part in that series which is where we're going to take a look at unconformities. Uh, one of the characteristics we see in the geological time scale that show us clearly that flood geology uh, did not happen. So let's move on over into the presentation and take a look at our first in the series on problems with flood geology. Okay, so we're talking about problems with flood geology. Okay. What is flood geology? First, let me just explain real quickly this idea that creationists have so you can have an understanding of it and why it's so important to creationism and why we can use science to show uh, that it's not true. Creationism tells us uh, that the earth is only six to ten thousand years old. Now that is the form of creationism that we call young earth creationism. So according to young earth creationism um, the earth is only six to ten thousand years old. Now there's a problem with that. Scientists have dug down into the earth and found all of these layers, okay, these geological layers that we've labeled and dated. In those layers um, from the standpoint of science seem to show that the earth has been around for billions of years. So young earth creationists have to in some way account for these layers and explain them. Okay, So they do that by trying to invoke Noah's flood from the book of Genesis in the Bible. And in that claim, they claim that in that worldwide flood, all of these layers, particularly of the Phanerozoic Eon, were all deposited during the one year of Noah's flood that the book of Genesis tells us about. Now, the book of Genesis tells us that the flood lasted from the very first day the rain started uh, till the day that Noah walked off the ark was a little bit over a year. So they claim that all of these deposits occurred during that one year of the flood. Those turbulent, churning waters of the worldwide global flood churned up all of this dirt, sediment, vegetation, dead animals that it had killed. And over time, as the flood calmed down, the flood waters calmed, uh, then all of this stuff began to deposit on the bottom of this massive ocean that had been created, worldwide ocean, by the flood. And those sediments settling uh, buried all of those dead animals, fossilized them, and that's why we get what looks like the, these layers that creationists claim aren't millions and billions of years old. Now on the surface of it, this sounds somewhat reasonable, okay? Um, maybe a large flood could deposit all of these sediments. The problem with that is when we start looking at characteristics of the geological layers and the, the different strata within uh, the geology of the earth, we start seeing features that do not fit with rapid deposition of sediments. There are some characteristics in the geologic layers that look like they could have been formed by very catastrophic events, massive burials of animals that were fossilized. We find uh, lots of different fossils and trees and things like that that were buried. So those things look like they could be the result of huge catastrophes. But we also find within the geological layers 
characteristics and features that could only have taken a very long time to form. So these characteristics disprove flood geology because really all we need to do is find one feature or one characteristic that had to have taken a long time to form and with that one feature we falsify flood geology because according to flood geology everything in the geological record had to have been formed through this massive turbulent catastrophic flood but in the use of science and in the science of geology we have discovered many features in the geological record that would have required massive amounts of time to form. So we're going to in this series take a look at just a few of those okay and we're going to start out in this first uh, presentation to look at one of them that we call angular unconformities. Now what are unconformities? Unconformities are locations in the geological scale where there's been a very large passage of time between layers. We actually have three of them. We have an angular unconformity, we have nonconformities, and we have disconformities. Now we don't have time to look at all three, so we're only going to look at one. And for the purposes of what we're looking at, the angular unconformity, which is the one we're going to look at, uh, serves the purpose of showing and illustrating how unconformities disprove flood geology. So let's look at an angular unconformity and how it forms. The very first step that occurs is you get deposition of sedimentary layers. Now how does this occur? It can occur from a large sea or a large lake uh, in ancient times that was just sitting there as lakes and seas do and depositing all of the dirt and, and debris and such that gets dumped into a sea or a lake by rivers and wind and things like that. Uh, you can think about current uh, seas and lakes like uh, the Great Lakes in the northern United States or the Black Sea um, or the Caspian Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, Just like today in ancient times we had large seas and lakes. Uh, and those lakes would sit there and during the process of sitting there over hundreds and thousands and millions of years they would deposit these layers of sediment. So that's the first step in the formation of an angular unconformity. Over time, however, those waters would recede and leave dry land with these sedimentary layers that would ultimately harden. And in the second step, we now have these layers that are hardened, solidified, and have been sitting there uh, for a long period of time. And now the pressures of tectonic plate movement which occurs, we have all of these plates on the planet that are moving around, and this movement causes the earth, portions of the earth, to buckle as these plates collide together um, and push against each other. And so through this pressure, you get these sediments buckling and folding over a long period of time. Now it takes a long time for this to happen because tectonic movement is very slow. Plates move, geological plates move at roughly the length of your fingernail, uh, the distance of the length of your fingernail every year. So this is really slow movement. So it would require literally hundreds of thousands and even millions of years for this kind of folding to take place. So over time you get this deformation and this folding and this buckling that occurs. That takes us to the third step. After the folding occurs, you have this folded area that is now on the surface, no water on top of it. And because it's exposed to the surface, it's now exposed to the processes of erosion, wind, sandstorms, rain, water. Uh, all of those forces of erosion begin to wear that area down. 
and it wears it down until you get roughly a flat surface. Okay, as you can see here. Now the folded area went all the way up here. But all of that is gone now because the processes of erosion over a long period of time has worn it down. Now you know that erosion takes place over a long period. That amount of earth is not going to go away quickly just through wind and sand and rain blowing on it. It's going to take, again, hundreds of thousands and millions of years to occur. And that takes us to step number four. In the fourth step, we now have those seawaters returning. And that happens over time. You have uh, the recession of seawaters and then the advancement of them again. Uh, that's a geological feature that occurs many times. The waters will recede and then they'll return again. So over thousands or millions of years, these waters returned again and formed another sea here. And during that process, more layers were deposited on top of this eroded area. Now once that occurs, uh, again, those seawaters recede. You're now left with an open area here. Um, and ultimately, this area becomes exposed where we can see it. And we see this layer here with these layers that are sideways or slanted. And they just run right into horizontal layers where they stop. So this here is the angular unconformity. Okay, this line right here. We call it an unconformity because we know that at this point in the layers, there is a massive gap in time between this occurring down here and this occurring up here. We have a gap here, okay, and that's why we call it an unconformity. And we know, based on those four steps we just looked at, that that gap is massive millions, tens of millions, and even hundreds of millions of years for all of this to have occurred. Just so you don't think geologists are making this up, here is a real angular unconformity as you would see it uh, out in real earth time. Here you can see there's the line of the unconformity. Below that, you have the slanted layers. At one point in time, these layers were flat because these are sedimentary layers that were deposited by an ancient sea. Over time, they deformed and they folded. You can see, because of the thickness of this, that fold would have covered a huge area. All of that is gone now. It's eroded away. You can just imagine calculating this curve out here, how much earth has been worn down here to get to this level here. And that's an, an amount of earth that would have required millions of years of time to erode away. After that, these layers here that are horizontal were deposited on top of it. So we have this unconformity right here. So, what we conclude from this is we have a feature in the geological record which there is no possible way that this could be formed within the one year of Noah's flood. And we have unconformities all over the earth. These things are not uncommon. They are everywhere. Uh, and they prove once and for all that this earth was not flooded in a large worldwide global flood, but instead that these layers have been formed over millions and billions of years.